So on Monday, I went on a little girls matcha date with my mom and my sister. I took them to a local all vegan cafe, the only one in our city. And honestly, I'm a little picky with matcha lattes. So this one wasn't my favorite, but I'm a big fan of their pastries. I decided to have a gluten-free shortbread cookie, which was a pinch too sweet, but otherwise it was really good. Today we're gonna be making Chinese takeout at home. We have some poison chickpea rolls. We're gonna meal prep this actually. So we're gonna make a bunch and we have all these veggies to chop. So we're gonna start with those. KT helped me. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna chop all this first. Let's begin. Let's begin, Ellie Jane. So before you chop up this veg, preheat your oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit and cook some rice. Then chop your broccoli into bite-sized pieces, thinly slice your bell pepper, throw it in a bowl, and toss it in olive oil, salt, pepper, and some chili flakes, if you want it to be a little spicy. I know the trays are overfilled, but just don't do it. <laughs> Bake that for 15 minutes. Someone wants to say hello. Yo, we about to eat nice tonight. We never eat Chinese food, so we about to go crazy. Just want to pop in and say what's good, you know what I'm saying, to Ellie Jane's people, you know what I'm saying? What's up? You know, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> and while we wait, I'm going to toast some sesame seeds on a dry pan. This is totally optional, but there's just something about sesame seeds on a stir fry that just completes it. Let me know if you agree. Time for the sauce. It has a bunch of ingredients in it, so just screenshot this window if you want to save it. But it's important to whisk the cornstarch and water first. And then we're gonna cook our garlic and ginger, add some cooked chickpeas, the sauce, and plate it up. Once you make this the first time, it's so easy to make, and you honestly don't even have to bake the vegetables. You can just throw it into the pan and cook it to your liking. Always gotta start with salad. Delish. My favorite dressing. Ever? Mm -hmm. It is really good. Taste time! We always be taking bites at the same time when it's something new. Always. So then we experience it at the same time. For the first time at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. That's so bomb! That's nice. Chinese take it out at home, baby. You gotta try it. You gotta try it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's so good. Cut. I'm ready to munch. The next morning, I went to Namo's with my aunt for her birthday and I got a Mighty Buddha brunch bowl. It was so freaking delicious, so saucy, and so flavorful. It's probably my favorite breakfast item from a brunch place. And for dinner, we had a bit of everything. We had the leftover teriyaki stir fry, roasted a butternut squash in our air fryer, just with some olive oil, salt, and pepper, Moroccan soup from my workplace, and some sushi, which was also from my workplace. The chef there was revamping the menu, so he gave me the vegan ones to take home and they were delicious. Left. Sorry, turn left here. It's a beautiful freaking day. I accidentally walked us into the wrong spot. It was literally like a pub or something. I was so confused. But we're here now. so much I want to get. And I grabbed the truffle mushroom bowl this time. It was unreal. I'm kind of going through the truffle phase right now, but not gonna lie, I don't think it's gonna be a phase. I think truffle is near my love for matcha. Sorry, sorry. 
I want to warn y'all, this was a slapping dinner. This is one of my favorite homemade meals ever. If you haven't had Ethiopian food, I'm going to show you everything you need to have a bomb Ethiopian feast in your own home. So first you want to pick out the stones from your split red lentils. This is so important. There was a time when I didn't do this and I would accidentally bite on the little stone and it wasn't pleasant. So please learn from my experience. You want to rinse your lentils really well and then let it soak for at least a couple of hours. The first thing we're making is the gomen, which is basically sauteed green. You can add your preferred veggies, but I'm just doing kale, carrot, and onion. Now we're gonna make shudo, which is basically like a seasoned chickpea sauce. It's one of my favorite things to eat. And once that's boiling, add the shudo powder. Use a cooking utensil to smooth out the clumps, add some salt, and cover it up while it's on a low boil. Then chop some tomatoes to add at the end if you'd like. Katie just got home from the store and surprised us with this. Look at how beautiful. Thank you. Oh. And banana chips. While that cooks, we're gonna move on to the miserwut, which is basically a red lentil stew. This is really flavorful and also super easy to make. So we're gonna heat some olive oil on medium-high heat, cook some onions, garlic, and ginger, add some tomato paste, and give it a couple of minutes to cook down. At this point, you would add the berberde powder. It's very spicy, so please be careful with this if you're sensitive to spice. Make sure not to over or undercook this. So now we're gonna serve it up with injera. Injera is a very spongy, sour, flatbread type of food that you use as your base and your edible plate. I approve. <laughs> Let's bring it in. Tough to say whether this dinner was better than yesterday's, but regardless, they're the best tacos I've ever had and I've never heard of or done this in my life. But basically, we took our leftovers from yesterday's Ethiopian feast and gave Ethiopian food a Mexican twist. So first I made pico de gallo, and once you've had it, you pretty much don't want those jarred tostitas salsas anymore. It just doesn't hit like pico rico. You want to do this part first to let it marinate as you prepare the rest of the meal. Here I'm making a taco sauce to drizzle on some of the tacos. It's delicious. You can use it for burgers, fries, tacos, sandwiches, literally anything. And then I made a quick taco seasoning mix. Make a bunch of this and you can use it for future taco nights, which I'm sure you'll have. Then cook some chickpeas on a pan with olive oil and your taco seasoning. I had a flex one time. Oh, oh crap, they dropped one. Now it's time to assemble the tacos. Really have fun with this and get creative. I think I made three main types of tacos for us, but we played around with the combinations as we ate. The first one was a shako, which is the shuro based taco. Then we have the mako, which is masir based. And lastly, the chaco, which is chickpea based. If there's anything you should make from this video, it's these. If they don't taste good to you, you probably just messed up with the cooking because this is some of the best food I ever had and I couldn't believe I made it. 10 tens out of 10. Oh, that's so good. Mm, really this good. is so good. You need to make this right now. No, you slap. Slap. Like way above a nine. Yeah, like at least 9.5. Mm. Okay, so I was gonna have three. I was totally like under capping. Mm. It's so good. I'm so happy. Yeah, me too. Mm. Holy crap. That's like some of the best food. So this morning I'm going to be making one of my new favorites. I've been having it a lot lately. It's just super easy to make. It tastes delicious. I'll show you just how easy it is. It's like one, two, three, bam, bam, bam. I'm going to put some Frankie on it. Never done this before. I normally just eat it by itself, but... So good. If you have really good hummus, you don't have to put like seasoning on top. 
So I just did a bit of an outfit change, but I got the cilantro. I just wanted to make a little pico de gallo type salad to add onto our rice bowl. So we're gonna have this coconut chickpea mushroom dish that I made a little while ago and I batch made it so that I could freeze some and defrost it for a dinner like this where I don't have time to cook after work. I will insert the recipe here, but it's super easy to make. You just saute onions, garlic, salt, pepper, turmeric, coconut milk, chickpeas, and cilantro. You could add spinach, mushroom, any type of vegetables really. But this is one of our favorite dishes to have. But yeah, we're just serving it up with rice, some little falafs, and the pico de gallo. And yeah, I'm really excited to have this dinner. I love this meal. It's one of my favorites. Are we ready? Amazing. The pico is crazy. Pico salad? I'm calling it pico salad. Oh, it's so crazy. good, right? This is really good. Yum. Really good. Ellie Jane holds it down. Yeah, and it's nice, like, eating it differently. It's kind of fun. There's a word for that. You know, like, those castles? A moat. The castle with the water around it, and then you have to, like, cross the bridge. You have, like, a moat around your rice. <laughs> Shall we have some sush? I'm with it. Okay, mine's kind of falling apart, so. Go. Just do it. Mmm. <laughs> eat right away. Amazing. Secure the cilantro bag. I'm going to try it with a bit of... Oh my. I actually can't believe this. 